Meet Mr. Gideon Praise from Anambra State, a young man who came to the City of Jesus International Ministry seeking God's help. Through grace, Gideon was welcomed and served as a chorister thanks to the man of God, Christopher Orgy. Gideon and his team were placed on a monthly salary ensuring they lacked nothing. As Gideon prepared for marriage he faced an unexpected challenge. His landlord falsely accused him of theft, leading to his arrest. This happened a week to his wedding. An evil plan to keep him in the cell unlawfully beyond the date of his wedding was conspired. However, the man of God, Christopher Orgy, intervened, contacting the commander of the anti-kidnapping squad for his release. The bail was reduced from over 500,000 naira to 100,000 naira. Gideon was freed, and all his possessions were returned. The enemy's plan to disrupt Gideon's wedding was spoiled. The man of God, Christopher Orgy, refunded the bail amount of 100,000 naira to Gideon, and covered his wedding expenses in full, which is a total of 3.5 million naira. On Gideon's wedding day, the weather was perfect, not a drop of rain which is a testament to steadfast prayers from the man of God, Christopher Orgy. Gideon returned to the City of Jesus International Ministry to give glory to God for his boundless grace. Watch with a prayerful heart. Shalom. Brother, you're welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hi, Lee George, Jesus. Tell, tell us your name, where you're coming from, and what you do for a living. My name is Gideon Praise. I'm from Anambra State, and I'm an engineer, and then I'm a businessman, and I'm also a worker in the City of Jesus International Ministry, a chorister. We believe you're here to share your wonderful testimony. Kindly go ahead and share with the people of God what God has done for you. Shalom, Church. I am here to testify of the goodness of the Lord in my life. Um, the area I want to testify is in the area of marital bliss. Somebody praise the Lord. Um, I had my wedding on the 25th of May. Please, can you help me celebrate Jesus? So I've been trying to get ready for the testimony, which I, I should have come before now, but um, I've just been procrastinating, but definitely intended to come and because I wouldn't want to sit on my testimony because it's a beautiful thing that I thank God for the wonderful thing that he did for me um, during my wedding and it was amazing. And I just want to return all the glory to God. That's why I'm here. Before my wedding, I came to meet the man of God, Christopher Oji. I came with my wife. We came to the mountain and then we met with him. And by God's special grace, he counseled us and it was an amazing counseling and one of the best that I've ever seen in my life. I was really, really impacted by the words that came out from the mouth of my man of God, Christopher Oji. And I want to say a very big thank you. And those words are very treasured in my spirit. And then I'm happy and grateful to God for sending such a gift to us in this Southeast. And then in this Enugu state. And then I want to say a big God bless you to him. All right. So preparing for my wedding, it was not an easy journey. Considering the situation of things economically in the nation how the prices of things have gone up and it was not easy, I will tell you. You know, a lot of us know what it means, you know, to prepare for such an event. Even right now, people do not actually do such events right now. They prefer to do a minimal stuff. But I am here to return all the glory to God because in everything, God took charge, God took control. I actually prayed for a successful wedding for people coming from everywhere, different parts of the state, for safety and God granted me that everyone that came went home and came back successfully and there was no issue. There was no bad news. I actually was skeptical about rain because we know that May, considering what happens in May when it has to do with rain, I was afraid that it was going to rain, that it was going to spoil the event for me. But to my shocking, you know, surprise, the rain fell on Friday, almost all through, if you can remember, on the 24th. 
And then on Saturday, there was no drop of rain. Can somebody celebrate Jesus? <laughs> Praise God. So while I was um, getting ready for the event, there were obstacles, there were challenges that the enemy brought my way to see that that day wouldn't hold. But God shamed him completely and then he didn't work out the way he planned it. What happened that a week to my event, I'd already, you know, gone far in my plans that I had concerning my wedding. I had an issue for you to understand that the enemy actually came, but God defeated him. God did not allow his plans to come to pass over my wedding. A week before the time, I think it was three weeks or so before that time, I had an issue where I'm staying with my landlord because I actually stay in a place where I have the landlord's family. And then you know what it means. It's not always easy. And then the challenge came that they had a puppy and a whole lot of story. They said the puppy got missing. And they said I was one that took the puppy. A whole long story, very funny story. They threatened a whole lot that they were going to do this, going to do that. And it was the devil. I knew it was the devil. So after the threatening, I had the wisdom to go to police station to make a report against threats because I had a privileged information from the brother of the landlady that she intends to come to my wedding event place to disrupt the event. And then the guy said, one of the days he called me and said, am I at home? I said, yes. He said, I should please come outside. I wanted to share something with me. And then he said he will not allow such to happen because I'm someone that um, he values so much. And then he said that the sister actually is planning to cause havoc on uh, my wedding day. Maybe bring police and then come to disorganize the event. And then I laughed. So because of that and a whole lot of other stuff, I had to now go to the police station, report it to the DPO. The DPO um, actually summoned them to come, which after much dragging, they came. DPO actually... Um, advised and cautioned them to desist from every form of harassment and allow me to do my wedding in peace, which they claimed they agreed. But along the line, I discovered that they were also angry that I had to report them, but I had to do it for my own safety too. And I was actually even afraid at some point because I, I wanted to leave the house even one week before the day so I could have my peace to do my event. Um, it happened that one of the days after choir rehearsals on Saturday, I went home, you know, finished eating, freshened up, wanted to sleep to prepare for the next day for service. About 11 p.m., I got a knock on the door and it was the police from anti-kidnapping. And they said um, they came to arrest me. They were all armed, four of them. And then they said, I said, what did I do? I wasn't panicking, though. I just said, what did I do? They said, when I get to the station, I will find out. I said, okay. So they took me. I wanted to drive out. They took me to their own car and said, I'll enter their own car. So I entered their car. I wanted to make a call. I probably, you know, call the man of God to let him know. But they collected my phone, actually. They didn't allow me to make any call. Because the plan, from what I understood, was for them to take me to the police station and then maybe put me inside the cell and then maybe leave me there without any contact, without contacting anybody. Because they actually tried for me not to contact anybody. So maybe they intended I would stay there till maybe my wedding day. Or maybe they would have released me on the Saturday of my wedding. I don't know. So... But God intervened. God did not allow such to happen. So while we were going, we went there straight. They did not allow me to make any call. So they harassed me, took me into the cell. That was how I just entered the cell. So okay, before then, I asked them, can I make a call with my phone? And after much dragging, they actually agreed. So I called my wife. I told her what was happening. So I, I now instructed her to call our drummer, Chris, so that Chris can now reach out to... Um, the man of God, which he did. After I called, I wanted to call the man of God, Christopher Oji. They did not allow me to make the call. So they forcefully took my phone from me and then pushed me inside the cell. And for the first time in my life, that was how I got myself in the cell. And it was a horrible 
experience for me. I didn't see it coming. It was just one week. That was on Saturday against the next Saturday that I was supposed to wear. And then I had everything going on and all that, the plans and all. And that was the peak of the event. So I stayed there all through the night while I didn't know the calls that went on. And in the morning, they brought me out. Then the landlord and the wife came. The commander came out. I said, okay, give me the petition. Let me see what I did. Let me see my offense and know what to do. They said, I cannot see it. Even the IPO that they paid, I know they paid them already because I know that's not how we do things. You cannot just come and arrest somebody without telling the person what you did and then just kick me inside the cell like that. The woman actually even aided the arrest. They carried me and, uh, with the, alongside the woman and then they dropped us along the road. The woman left. I was thinking that an IPO should follow us to the station and then we'll make a statement. I think I have a clue about that a little. So, but they did not allow such. She left and then didn't come back to you the next day. So that was how I stayed there. And when they brought me out in the morning, I heard that the man of God, Christopher Oji, actually called the commander in charge of the anti-kidnap and said that the person you are holding needs to be in church this morning. Because that was on Sunday morning. And he said he was going to do that. I think it was in the nights that he called them or something. The woman that was supposed to handle the case, the IPO, was supposed to come that morning. She did not come. She intentionally did not come so that I would, you know, stay more because it was already planned. So at the long run, as God will have it, they called my brother, they called, you know, some of my family members and my friends. They came. By then, man of God, Christopher, had already spoken with the commander of anti-kidnapping. And I was bailed and they actually wanted me to bail myself with a huge sum of money, maybe 500,000 or thereabouts. But because it did not go the way the IPO wanted, as a matter of fact, she did not even receive one dime. So she was angry in her spirit. So I came out, they bailed me, actually finally paid a um, hundred thousand and then I was bailed. And they couldn't give me back my phone that same Sunday. So I asked for my phone. So who took record of my, you know, they said the person had left. So are you not supposed to call the person that you have released this person? Come and return the items. You know, it was not a funny incident. I didn't actually lay hold on my phone until the next day. The IPO did not come. The person in charge of the phone that took my items did not come until the next day. So I, I wasn't able to even reach out to anybody again. When I later got my phone the next day, later at night or evening, I reached out. I saw one of God's um, calls and I reached out to him, but he did not pick. So I messaged him and um, that was all. So getting into the week of the wedding, I actually was planning, you know, doing everything possible. I'd already engaged the vendors, you know, paid the ones I could and then committed a whole lot of them and all that, you know, sorted out um, things. So on Thursday, that was on 23rd, my wedding was on the 25th. So man of God, Christopher Alge called me on Thursday evening. And he said, um, Shalom. And then we greeted. And then he asked me what later happened at the police station. So I told him everything that happened and the accusation and all, which I don't know anything about. And then he now said, what now later happened? I said, um, I was bailed. He now asked if I was aware that he called the, the commander. So I said, yes, I got to know. And then I'm very grateful. So I thanked him and because I was surprised how everything happened. And um, he asked me how much they bailed me with. So I, I told him, um, I think it's 100,000 because from the information they gave me. So... He now said, okay, I should get um, the information properly and get back to him. So when I did, I got back to him. And before I knew it, man of God sent the money and he said it was for my bailout. Please, can we celebrate Jesus? So he sent 100,000 for my bailout. So I was shocked and I wasn't expecting that. I was really, really speechless. Before then, after we talked about the, the bailout, and all. So I thanked him, you know. So he now said, okay, how are you planning for your wedding? So I said, 
by God's grace, I'm doing my best and I've already committed some of the vendors and paid off um, other things. Um, and he said, okay, how is it going? I said, it's going well. So he tried to, you know, ask me in details, so which I gave him the details. So he asked me, okay, this one, this one, I now told him the amount. He asked me this one, I told him the amount. So when he got to the drinks, I told him, he said, hope I'm not doing alcohol. I said, I'm not doing alcohol. <laughs> so I said, I'm not doing alcohol, sir. I'm not that type. So, and he said, okay, so what is it like? And I told him. So he said, okay, it should be between so 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 figure and all. I said, yeah, but I need to, you know, check and see what I've already spent, some total of it. So he said, okay, I should do that quickly and get back to him. And prior to that, I didn't ask him for anything. I didn't ask him for money. I didn't ask him to, you know, help or support or anything. So 10 minutes after I sent him that, what I totaled was um, 3.5 million. And after I sent the budget of the wedding, which I had already handled uh, most of the things, so he kept quiet. So I, I decided to rest because it was already a stressful week for me. Um, because of what I went through um, in the police cell and all that. And I just tried to sleep a little bit, just like a nap, not like sleeping. It wasn't up to 10 minutes, my phone rang, so I picked it up, it was another call. So when I finished the call, I slided my phone, I saw my man of God, Christopher Orgy's name. So I was like, oh, man of God actually reached out to me and he was like, he credit a lot. And then I opened my phone, I saw he credited my phone with 3.5 million. Somebody say God is good. Somebody say Satan is a liar. Yes, right now you will be seeing on your screen the proof of the credit I last sent to our brother. This is a total budget for his wedding. The total sum of 3.5 million naira. This was after the man of God, Christopher G, as a father figure, swooped in when Satan wanted to steal his joy. Can you imagine going to the prison a week to your wedding for what? An accused case of stealing a puppy. If it's not Satan, who else can it be? Because we have Jesus, we are proud and we are confident and we are overcomers. So we thank God Almighty for his deliverance in the life of our brother. Currently, you are seeing on your screens right now. This is not arrangement. This is not a joke. Earlier on, you saw the picture of the wedding, himself and his beautiful wife. And right now, you are seeing on his cell phone the screenshot of the credit alert from the man of God, Christopher Oji, and the partners of the Lovers of God International Foundation. The total sum of 3.5 million naira. This is just one of the evidences and proofs. Can we celebrate Jesus one more time? Okay, brother, kindly go ahead. How did you feel receiving such a huge favor? As you mentioned, you were not expecting this. How did you feel? Wow, I felt like... I, the shock was something else for me. I woke up when I saw three, five, something. I was thinking it was three hundred and fifty thousand. I never imagined that such thing could happen. I was surprised, so I now had to say, "Okay, this is double comma I'm seeing. Oh, <laughs> this is not one comma I'm seeing. This is two. And I'm like, what kind of a thing is this? Like, who does that?" Somebody say, who does that? <laughs> this is mind-blowing. I was shocked. I was overwhelmed. I, there was goosebumps on, all over my body. I was, because I wasn't expecting it. And I didn't ask him for the help. I didn't have to call him. I didn't have to tell him I needed the, uh, to do this. I needed to do that. Even though I already, you know, was doing everything that was supposed to be done. Paying off the vendors and doing all. And then the alert just came. I just don't know how to express how I felt. It's just amazing.
We give all glory to God for this divine favor and for his blessings upon your life. The word of God says in Proverbs 18, 22, that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So the man of God, we thank God Almighty for using his servant, Christopher Jim, to be a tool to express God's favor upon your life. So what reply would you be able to give to people that actually say the man of God does not help workers, the man of God, Christopher Jim, does not care, now that you are an evidence and a testimony of God's love through his servant Christopher Oji, what would you be able to reply to blasphemers that would say these kind of things? Anyway, what I can say is that anyone who is saying that man of God Christopher Oji does not help people, I think that thing is coming from the pit of hell because it's not true. I have experienced it firsthand and I'm a witness and I'm a proof of God's faithfulness and love that he has bestowed in the life of our man of God, Christopher Oji. Considering I hadn't even spent um, such a long time in the ministry, I couldn't understand it. Like, the love is something else. Like, he's a man, I can't describe the kind of heart he has. I, I felt so overwhelmed even lately because there are things that will happen. You can't keep it to yourself. I even see myself sharing the testimony with my friends, with the people that are close to me. Look at what this man of God did in my life and did to me and did for me. The support is something I couldn't um, ever imagine that uh, any man of God could do. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. So I want to say that anyone saying that the man of God, Christopher Oji, does not help is actually used by the devil to tarnish the name and the image of the man of God, Christopher Oji. So now I want to advise that such people should desist from that. Thank you. Praise God. Okay, brother, I would love to ask you what part of the message of the man of God, Christopher G, has changed and transformed your life. You mentioned for your wedding that there was no alcohol. So what aspects of the message of the man of God, Christopher G, prompted you towards that direction and also changed your life and your salvation personally? I've actually been impacted greatly by the ministry of the man of God, Christopher O.G. He's such an exceptional man. He's such a special being that we've not seen. And um, in the Southeast, God has given us a blessing. God has given us um, a man, one of a kind, in this part of the country. And we celebrate the grace of God in his life. And I've sat under his um, teachings for a while now. And I've been tremendously blessed and impacted by his teachings in the aspect of love, righteousness, obedience to God, and forgiveness. These teachings have really greatly impacted my life in ways that I cannot even imagine. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. What can you say about the power of God here at the City of Jesus International Ministry? Apart from the charity, the show of love, righteousness, what can you say about the move of the power of God here at the City of Jesus International Ministry? Well, the power of God here in the City of Jesus International Ministry is raw. And as a music minister, I've been to a lot of places. I've been to plenty, you know, places. And I can tell you when I walk into a place that um, the presence of God dwells, I know and I feel it. So the power of God here at the City of Jesus International Ministry is such a, a raw power that you cannot quantify. It's such a power that transforms life. I've seen lives being transformed here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. And it's such an amazing um, impact that the ministry has on our people and even in our lives and even in my own life personally. So I'm, I want to say thank you, Jesus, for that. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We'd love to hear from you. Firstly, a word of advice to music ministers, as you mentioned that you were one. People that would, first of all, maybe before the minister or before they render their services in God's presence, would ask for a fee or a token. 
which the man of God, Christopher J., has fervently stood against as it is against God's will and God's purpose for his children. So what word of advice would you be able to give to music ministers that still act and behave as such? All right, I understand that um, as a music minister, music ministers face a lot of challenges and abuse in different forms, in different places. And that has made them, you know, you know, build a kind of a wall and put up some a kind of um, a tag on themselves. So, but I want to say that serving God should be wholeheartedly. It should be something that you do with your whole heart. And I want to encourage the music ministers to ignore all the things or maybe the challenges they face in the time past, you know, in the hands of the wrong people who do not value music ministers and who do not cherish their gifts. For them to deliver their gifts in the house of God free of charge and to also commit themselves in the service of God, knowing that there is a blessing attached to it. It's not all about money. Thank you. Can we celebrate Jesus? Okay, we also want to hear from you. There are so many people that are shy to come forward to share their testimonies. Why? Because they believe that the ministry is all about social media and coming out in the media. Because of this, they relent in sharing their testimony and coming out to glorify God for what he has done for them and in their lives. So what would you be able to say to such people? Well, sincerely, I think anyone who will be shy to come and testify of the goodness of the Lord is a proud person. And that person is an ungrateful person. And I want to say that it is not a good thing. Anyone that receives, you know, um, a blessing, a support, um, a favor, because they said appreciation is application for more. So when you appreciate God for what he has done for you, I believe he will do more. So I want to advise everyone or all the workers or whoever have actually received help or support should not consider the um, social media or whatever before coming to give God the glory because it's not to the glory of man, it's to the glory of God. Thank you. Thank you so much for that advice. Yes, we can celebrate Jesus if we want to. Yes, as our man of God, Christopher J. would say that the City of Jesus International Ministry is a house of God. The City of Jesus International Ministry is not a media house, but a church built by God's word and by his spirit. It's a place where God, through his word and by his spirit, is here fully to solve the problems of people. Social media is nothing but a tool that God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit uses to reach out to people all around the world that cannot be here with us physically. So, brother, we thank you for that advice. Lastly, give a general advice to viewers all around the world watching you, people that are expecting God to bless them and also expecting the kind of blessings that you have received from God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. What word of advice would you give to them generally? All right. I would advise everyone watching all over the world on all the social media platforms, wherever you're watching from, I just want to advise that you continue to follow God, continue to devote yourself to the service of God, knowing that there is always a blessing that is attached. Like I said, what I received was a physical blessing. Then talk more of the spiritual blessings that I've been receiving um, here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. So it's always a privilege. And I also want to encourage the partners to continue to partner and continue to give their best to seeing that lives are touched, seeing that um, destinies are transformed because it's not a waste. I want to believe that um, from what I've come to know, the man of God, Christopher Oji, is a different kind of a person. Personally, I have not seen someone like him. I have not seen, I've worked with different men of God. I want to categorically state it. I have not seen any man of God that has the kind of spirit that I see in the life of Christopher Oji. He's such an amazing, exceptional man of God. So 
I usually tell the choir that anytime you come into the house of God, especially that place that the name of God is genuinely mentioned, don't take it for a joke. When the man of God gives an instruction and says, do this, don't take it for granted. Don't even wait for anybody to tell you to do anything. Bring out yourself, devote yourself, and commit yourself to the service of God because it pays, not just physically, not just um, financially, but spiritually, there are blessings. I also want to thank especially our man of God, Christopher Oji. He's such an amazing man. I also want to thank our woman of God, Evangelist Joy. Please, can we celebrate her, please? I was so greatly encouraged at my wedding. I was happy. I didn't imagine the love that I got and enjoyed during my wedding. I saw the coaching members, you know, a full bus, fully loaded, attended my wedding from coaching. So I am so grateful to God. And I want to say a very big thank you to our dear man of God for all that he has been doing, especially from my heart. I am grateful. Thank you. We love to use this opportunity to encourage children of God all around the world watching us right now. You are hearing these beautiful testimonies of families sharing their testimony. So we want to use this opportunity to encourage you that if you are being discouraged to share your testimony, you should not sit on your testimonies. Kindly come forward and share the wonderful things God Almighty has done in your life. And on behalf of the man of God, Christopher G, we do wish you a happy married life. A man of God, Christopher G, would say that marriage is a grace and also a gift from God. He would mention that if you cannot maintain your spiritual relationship with God Almighty, your father, you cannot maintain your physical relationship with your spouse. So we encourage you to lead a happily married life in righteousness by living a life without sin and sinful desires. Following the tenets of God's love, we encourage you to keep making the word of God the foundation of your love, of your life and your family. We are surely seeing you coming back for greater testimonies and future in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.